So many of you have reached out to us with questions about FEMA disaster assistance. We've also seen a lot of rumors spreading online. We've got some helpful information for you. 7 News Consumer Erica Diane Lee joins us with that and more of your consumer buzz. Hi, Kelsey and Amy. Yeah, happy Friday to all of you. To clarify, 7 News uh, to, here to help requested a formal interview with representatives from the agency. Public Information Officers Gabriel Gonzalez and Hannah Kirschman sat down with me to address your concerns. Gabriel and Hannah, thank you so much for joining us. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions and there's some misinformation out there, so we hope you can clarify it. Let's yeah. start with that $750 check that some people can get for uh, things like spoiled food. A lot of people say they've been denied. What's behind that? Yes, uh, and thank you for asking that question because we've had a lot of people concerned about those denial letters that they are starting to receive. Uh, we encourage you, if you receive that denial letter, look at it very closely, read through it thoroughly. It will show you exactly why you were denied. And a lot of times it comes down to a very simple error on your application. Are you more likely to get approved if you do meet with a FEMA representative in person? The questions that are going to be on the application in person are the same that are going to be online. The biggest difference is that if you do have those additional questions or points of clarifications, you're going to have a live person there to be able to walk you through that process to make sure that you fill out the application correctly. Do you need to apply through your insurance carrier first and get a denial letter in order to be eligible for FEMA assistance? Yes. You do? You, if you have private insurance, you apply to your private insurance if you are denied or it is not completely covered by your private insurance, we could chip in or complement the other part that your insurance did not cover. The really important thing here is, Diane, is that double dipping does not occur. Let's say your damage is from the power loss, for instance. You lost very vital you know, groceries or medicine, but it is below the amount of your deductible and it wouldn't make sense to file. What do you do then? You apply to FEMA. Here's another big rumor um, that we'd love for you to dispel. A lot of people online are saying that you have to pay back the money that you get from FEMA. Is that true? No, ma'am. The money that you receive from FEMA is a grant. It is not a loan. The money that you receive is yours to keep and yours to spend on your, your personal needs and the needs of your family, and it is not money that you will ever have to pay back, and it is not money that is going to be taxed at the end of the year. Okay, I was going to ask that. That's another big question. So you don't need to worry about taxes. No. You don't need to worry about paying it back. No. What about income limits? Is there an income There's limit no for the application? Income limit. No, There's it's not income based at all. Another rumor that was out there. Thank Fair you enough. for clarifying that Absolutely. one. So many people have down trees in their yard. It's expensive to get those to the curb. Mm -hmm. Does FEMA help cover that if private insurance won't? Potentially. It is important that people will call FEMA take as many pictures as possible and upload that through their application and a person who is specialized in providing uh, information on individual assistance can answer all of those questions and make sure that uh, we can get that taken care of if it's eligible for assistance. Now to apply for disaster assistance, you'll need your ID, proof of residency, and bank routing number for direct deposit. 